Well, it's been 30 years since the CDC reported the first case of HIV AIDS to the nation on June 5th, 1981. San Francisco General Hospital was the first hospital in the country to open its doors to AIDS patient and has since developed innovative treatment models. Joining me now are Dion Jones, nurse on Ward 86 at SF General, and Dr. Brad Hare, who is the medical director of Ward 86. Welcome, and what has changed in those 30 years, would you say? We know about a lot has changed, really, with HIV. Uh, when you, if you were diagnosed with, with AIDS in 1981, you could expect to live 18 months with the disease. Now, when someone's diagnosed HIV positive in San Francisco, we expect them to live decades. We expect them to live into old age. I tell my patients now they have to plan for retirement. And that was something that would have been unthinkable 30 years ago. So the, the treatments that we use now really have revolutionized the way we care for people with HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Dion, talk a bit about what it was like 30 years ago to be on that ward. Well, as you remember, in the early days when we first started these uh, services in 1983, this was a decision that was made by the city of San Francisco with the approval of the mayor, the Department of Public Health, uh, to create these services. And this was for disease that still had no name and no cause and we weren't completely certain what the transmission was and what the risks were to healthcare workers. Much has changed around that and m many of those changes happened quickly. We quickly learned what caused the, this disease. We quickly learned and confirmed how it was transmitted. And now we are living with more and more people here in San Francisco and around the world who are living with this disease. Fewer people are dying if they have access to care. Mm -hmm. The problems of access to care exist all over the world and including in San Francisco. So we still have people dying every year and oftentimes they're, they're dying because of problems of access to care. That ward was sort of a wild place in the early days. <laughs> uh, I mean, we had entertainers mm -hmm. coming in and people bringing cookies and mm -hmm. baking and all kinds of right. things were going on there now. Uh, I was just looking at some of the scenes from the ward today. Uh, it looks mm -hmm. uh, very modern and very up to date. So what are some of the innovative things that you're doing? Well, we have several programs to, to really address the needs of people living with HIV and AIDS today. One of our, our new programs that we're developing is really an, an, is an HIV and aging clinic. So I think if you had asked people in this field, even as recently as 10 years ago, would you ever need to, the services of a geriatrician in an HIV clinic, they would have laughed at you. But that's what we're doing now. We're actually creating models of care to take care of people as they age into their 50s, 60s, and 70s with HIV. Because first of all, we expect them to live that long. And second of all, we're seeing that HIV may actually be accelerating the aging process. So we're all subject to chronic diseases as we age, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, bone loss, and we're actually seeing those show up in people with HIV and AIDS as, as much as 10 years before their counterparts who are HIV negative. So we need to innovate these new models of care and transform how we're delivering care to these people who are living a long time with a chronic illness. At one time, uh, back at the beginning of all of this, uh, for some people who were not, as they called it, not that sick, they were put into private homes and uh, group home mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. Do you still, are you still doing that now with, mm -hmm. with uh, some of those people who were there? Yes, we are, and oftentimes, um, uh, there are different levels of, uh, of residences from, uh, there's uh, a large skilled nursing facility in the brand new Laguna Honda Hospital that has I think over 70 people with HIV. And then there are many community residences. The problem that we're facing is that we're running right into the problem of affordable housing um, shortage here in San Francisco and people end up staying there and yet there are other people as they're getting diagnosed and people continue to be diagnosed every day who are uh, needing to be housed. Uh, homelessness and marginal mm -hmm. housing is a really key risk factor for many of our new patients. Um, it's a key risk factor in getting HIV. Um, it's, a, it's a risk factor in not being able to access care. Is, is the city able to keep up its commitment that it made 30 mm -hmm. years ago? Back then, people, no one could mm -hmm. think ahead 30 years, hardly mm -hmm. 30 days in some right. cases. Right. Right. So how, how has the city's response been to the responsibility that SF General took on? 
Well, it's one of the great things about San Francisco is the community has always mobilized around this condition and it continues to do so. And San Francisco as a city and San Francisco General Hospital continue to lead the way and innovate around modern management of HIV AIDS and lead, lead this into the future. Uh, for example, we strongly recommend universal uh, testing and universal treatment. We're the first city to actually make a statement that everybody with HIV AIDS should be offered and on medications for their own health benefits. And that's a very strong and powerful statement and our city has stood behind that in terms of providing the care and supporting people in HIV AIDS, not only with their medical care, but also with substance abuse, mental health services, case management, and really the additional services that people need to be successful taking their medications now. Are the communities that are affected by AIDS uh, as supportive and as active in participating in, uh, in the care of those who are diagnosed with AIDS? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's been one of the hallmarks in San Francisco is the involvement of, of community organizations, just like you remember from the early days in, uh, in, on Ward 5B. I think that um, though we still need to make some significant breakthroughs, the issue of stigma has not changed in 30 years. People's reaction to an HIV diagnosis has not changed. They still think they're going to die. They still think they can't tell anybody. Women still think they can't have children. None of those are true, but that is still what everybody believes, whether you get diagnosed in San Francisco or in West Africa or in South Africa. So I think the involvement and the stepping up of community organizations is, is still really needed. It's really critical uh, in changing attitudes, mm -hmm. in supporting people um, who are at risk for acquiring HIV and for those who are living with this disease. All right, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Hare, thank you. And, and you also for being with us, Dion, tonight.